Hi, good afternoon. We are talking about the Vicon State. And this is a video of a group of videos about uh, the code, about the math uh, science, about the papers that are for the Ethereum 2.0 implementation and it's for understand all the things that this kind of implementation uh, has and so far this video is only about the protocol specification about the Vicon state and we are talking about the Trinity client that this Trinity client is a Python client that are doing the real world implementation of the protocol specification of the of the Casper FGG plus the Forcher rule that also is the Casper uh, correct by construction but we saw in another videos that this uh, kind of roadmap in codes are in in experimental uh, way and also it's still in development so I do these videos because uh, there is a lot of VFT um, protocol uh, VFT protocol uh, knowledge out there so I think it's a good opportunity for um, spread uh, this knowledge uh, for the VFT problem and the VFT protocol and also this uh, could be a guide in a some way for make a VFT protocol from scratch so let's move to see a video about what is Ethereum Thanks to the power of modern communication, we have the ability to create technologies that are decentralized, removing middlemen and allowing users to interact with each other directly through a global network. Decentralized applications have been becoming more and more important in the past 10 years and have the benefits of massively reducing costs and barriers to entry, removing single points of failure, preventing censorship, and ensuring transparency and trust between all the parties involved in an interaction. BitTorrent, a file sharing network I developed in the early 2000s, is arguably the first decentralized application to have been created. BitTorrent allows anyone to share any kind of file with anyone else in the world, allowing people to distribute content quickly and easily, even if they do not have the resources to pay for their own website or server. Five years later, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with the idea of a blockchain, a sort of distributed database and used it to build Bitcoin, the world's first decentralized currency. Decentralized currencies like Bitcoin allow people to send money instantly anywhere around the world with no regard for national borders with negligible fees. Bitcoin is increasingly being used for international remittances, micropayments, and commerce online. Uh, decentralized applications for finance, uh, cloud computing, mes messaging, and distributed governance are soon to come. Ethereum is a platform that is specifically designed for people to build these kinds of decentralized applications, or dApps for short. The Ethereum client, which we are calling the Ether browser, will include a built-in peer-to-peer network for sending messages, and a generalized blockchain with a built-in programming language, allowing people to use the blockchain for any kind of decentralized application that they want to create. Ethereum can be used to build financial applications that are fully trustworthy and transparent because they run on the blockchain. Online, cryptographically secure systems for managing your property and contracts. Social networking and messaging systems that allow users to maintain control of their own data. Systems for trading underutilized computational resources like CPU time and hard drive space. 
and eventually its rules for online voting and distributed governance. And the most exciting applications of Ethereum are probably the ones that we have not even thought of. As with all new platforms for innovation, like the protocols that underlie the internet itself, it is not always easy to predict what they're going to be used for. Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the modern internet as a whole are all a result of uh, early developments in the World Wide Web and JavaScript, the programming language of the World Wide Web, from the 1990s. Similarly, by providing a universal programmable blockchain and packaging it up into a client that anyone can use, the Ethereum project hopes to do the same for finance, peer-to-peer -peer commerce, distributed governance, and human collaboration as a whole. Now the question is, what will you build on top of Ethereum? So that's just an introduction video about what is Ethereum, explained by uh, the creator of this uh, technology. So let's move to see this uh, state machine. So far in the Ethereum 2.0, this virtual machine that is calling the AVM, that means Ethereum virtual machine. The first. Um, the first paper that I start thinking and they start talking about uh, this uh, virtual machine was the, the Ethereum uh, yellow paper that it's the Ethereum a secure decentralized general transaction ladder that was written by uh, Gavin Good and it's the official information and also the Matt Clean meaning in codes but um, make all the math and lemmas and theorems that this uh, Ethereum virtual machine has. So we do this first introduction about this Ethereum virtual machine because we are talking about uh, this uh, Bitcoin state that we saw in another videos. That is the way that this Bitcoin chain starts. And it's the Genesis stand, it's the Genesis state, needs uh, a four, needs a slot, needs random, it's needs version is needs uh, story, needs um, a work state because this work state it's the virtual machine implementation, and in this virtual machine uh, you have a sub protocols that also are calling uh, smart contracts. And this smart contracts is based on opcodes, and this interpretate the data that you put in a um, language that is called in Solidity. Also exists the Viper framework that allows to make uh, sub protocols in Python, um, hybrid of Python code in this Viper thing. So far, uh, this kind of implementation um, is in the Ethereum 2.0 version, and there is a roadmap for this Ethereum 2.0 that it's calling the AWAMS, and then also pretends to put an interpretation in the WebAssembly meaning that this WebAssembly we saw in another we will be saw in another videos that it's an interesting way to to handle the different interpretation in different languages to make a um, efficient runtime in the world state of this uh, virtual machine but it's still in development so let's move to see what is uh, this world state that the beacon state needs to make Byzantine powerful I mean that don't have a trade-off to Byzantine filers and don't have trade-off to crashes and any kind of attack of vector or adversary thing. So let's see these papers. So it's the first time that you see this paper. You need deep tie in, in the official Ethereum GitHub and it's open source. And also you can find over there uh, in different hubs in the internet. But it's an uh, interesting uh, paper about the uh, Ethereum uh, virtual machine. 
So let's move to see the different things that uh, make sense in the beacon say. And we have here the the first uh, definition that is calling the word state. That in the yellow paper, the word state, a state, it's a mapping between addresses that have these 160 bytes identifiers and account states. That uh, another meaning it's a data structure serialized in this kind of framework that is called in the LP that is a incredible implementation in the team 2.0 and you can deep dive and saw how this RLP works under the hood if you see the folder that is calling our LP in the Ethereum 2.0 open source code. So this word state, you can see that I have two kind of models. That is the mapping between address and the account states. So in the Vcon state, you need to have this input all the time because you have a um, copy of this word state in different nodes or that could be the, the leaders and also could be the validators so far you need to re replicate this message of this copy of this word state across the the communication of of the network so it's a hard way to dealing with the personal connect asynchronous network so let's see um, this protocol specification in the Ethereum hip hoop and understand uh, all the things that this implementation is dealing. So You can need to go to the protocol specification of the 2.0 version, but because of there is the 1.2.0. So, so you can find here the Vicon chain. And in the Vicon chain, we're talking about this Vicon state. So you have here this beacon stay and we saw in another videos the versioning, the story thing, the uh, 2.1.0 that is the proof of work chain and it's also the Ethereum 1.2.0 that is in right now it's the mainnet uh, setting. You have the register, the randomness that needs another five videos <laughs> the slashing condition that is an interesting way to reach the consensus that we saw in another videos that is the thing that decide what is good for the chain or what is not good for the chain in terms of validating and the attestation that we saw in another videos uh, make a uh, this uh, two kind of way of the previous epoch attestation and the current epoch attestation. So under the hood, this attestation uh, have this meaning of the stage machine, and you can find here in the in the folder of of the Trinity client that we have the stage machine. So far, this uh, folder have different uh, folders also but uh, have different things about this attestation protocol specification so um, that we saw uh, in, in summary that this state machine is for have a very good word state that we saw in another videos that this word state it's the the mapping between the address and a common state so this is the way for have um, a Byzantine virtual machine. So in code because uh, could be have um, different meanings, but in math sense it's for have a very good resilient uh, implementation of any kind of code that you type in and you need uh, input and output in the 
Peace and Tenfold Tolerance Protocol. So let's move to see more code. So let's uh, understand this. So let's to move in the way to have a better. So this base state transition it's a configurable configurable I have this meaning needs different objects so first the config Known def the init that it's a self config a to one config then this self config is equals to the config so this abstract method need to apply the stay transition and under the hood we saw that this state transition is the water state of this state machine mm, replication that in the literature you can find um, thousands of papers about the state machine replication and this state machine replication is a paradigm in the distributed systems that basically means that you need to replicate the, the machine in a, in a resilient way and that means that this uh, Byzantine machine needs to deal and reach the consensus in the best way of performance and safety conditions so this apply state transition is to get the word state that you have in Ethereum 2.0 that is calling the et one data and you get this for the beacon state but this is under the hood how to get this uh, state transition and it's still in development so could change in the future but um, it's only things are or doing the helper thing for the booking uh, the code that you're making and other kind of implementation so you have the self the state the become state you have the signet block that is the way for have this the become the become block singing So far, and then I start to think how to connect this. So you need to make this future slot that we saw in another videos that this slot will be randomness, but the random implementation and the BFD implementation that could work for a uh, hardware implementation for make a rigs for make a verifiable uh, delay function so this pdf uh, is an interesting way for make a decentralization thing that the validators don't know where to put the attestation uh, thing for validate the block so it's an extra layer for for have more decentralization more security and also it's a technology that could 
uh, have a better resilient in in the VFT protocol implementation. So let's see this future slot. So this slot is unknown. You also have the check proposer signature. It's a ball. It's a true. So this beacon state needs a different kind of implementation so far uh, you need to apply the state transition function to this state that under the hood we saw that is the word state and you can deep dive more for figuring out things of this word state of the of the of the virtual machine that are based on data in block or future slot so this block is the thing that gets it, this data and the future slot it's how to put this data in this chart chain for reach the consensus in the longest chain for have more scalability and have more decentralization uh, setup so this uh, kind of implementation it's so hard so let's see more things. So under the hood, we saw how to apply this state transaction of get, getting this data. So let's see the base. And you can find that this class of the base become a state machine. It's also a configurable of the protocol specification and we have uh, a variant of this or a network partition and this need to have data of the base beacon chain df So the config that we saw in another video is the SA2 config that we saw it's uh, the new config for this new beacon chain. And you can find in the protocol specification the things that this S2 config needs. So let's see more about under the hood how this works. So the type of the base we can change df is equals to unknown. So you start to thinking in this uh, base for this transaction, for this transition, sorry, for handle the thing of getting the data as you want. So you also need the single block class that is object that have the signature signet beacon block so you need to put that is unknown this is state class so type this beacon state that it's also unknown so this is the transition Class type base state transition so equals to unknown. So this object and that is a class that starts thinking in this state machine in the in the beacon state. It's um configurable configurable figurable that have this protocol specification and it's a page of data of objects that needs this state so you also need the for choice scoring class 
so we saw in another video that the Casper FUG that it's uh, the algorithm for um, make these rules for reach the consensus we also have this adaptation of the Sabolovsky paper that it's calling the ghost Gribis host sub tree implementation that are ghosts but in terms of the protocol uh, Casper implementation it's calling a fortune rule that have um, adaptation of the paper in the in the thing for scoring the classes and the number of the station that any kind of chain have so this base vcon for choice scoring is unknown so the for choice scoring so, so the face of the for choice scoring also it's unknown So you need to make uh, this kind of object for understand this state machine. So let's deep dive more in the semantics of this uh, first state machine. And so far you have another interesting paper that was writing for a, a researcher's order and they make this uh, game paper that is the complete semantics of the Ethereum virtual machine and you can find here in this paper uh, all the semantics that the Ethereum virtual, the Ethereum virtual machine uh, have, has so these semantics uh, are based in the solidity token smart contract and we can find here that you have the solidity the solidity code that is great in in the way of, of this contract talk but under the hood you have these semantics of the opcodes that are doing the interpretation for make this worry state makes the things that the Ethereum virtual machine needs. So we also saw that this contract implementation, smart contract implementation, have a uh, different books in the in the way of the code but it's a civil war thing i mean you can think that maybe this is a problem of the virtual machine implementation but also you start to thinking okay it's a decentralized way for doing the things you need you don't need to to make a permission for the network to to deploy a network you only need a uh, gas that is paying in way that needs ethereum for for make the the procession of this contract and it's all the thing that you need and it's the way for for the stop the span network it's a kind of thing of solve the double spend problem so this kind of problems in the virtual machine implementation have um, books that cost uh, value money money value and it's a big deal of these smart contract failures but in this civil war uh, thinking you can say that was a problem for the, the guy that developed this and also you can think that it's the problem of do this permission setting but so far it's only ideologies so this is only education and 
this kind of books that have these smart failures contracts are characteristic that any kind of data have books so it's a expected thing but also it's the custody because this kind of protocols have custody so maybe it's a thing of this smart contract for having custody but it's a way for that this thing needs for doing the promise that the smart contract needs to do so it's a problem of custody here for in my opinion but let's see more things was a blah 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 thing so you can see that these uh, word state have different things that if you are familiar with the virtual machine uh, thing you have um, different formal language definition that are divided in the syntax thing and you have the semantics and so far this kind of two things is for uh, make the the code run in a runtime so this fig is interesting all the things that you can make with this two kind of approach the syntax and the semantics approach so you can see that this word state that's the semantics that the ethereum virtual machine has are very hard in the logic semantic structure so you can leave that a lot in this uh, any lecture that you have in this paper you find another thing that works to understand the the virtual machine implementation in the blockchain approach to do a smart contract approach so you can find here all the semantics that the opcodes needs and the examples of what do under the hood for execute the gas and do the interpretation for run the sub protocol that also in another words calling the smart contract and requires condition of this code so so in this permissionless setting this uh, kind of ethereum virtual machine it's an um, amazing solution for do uh, independent uh, networks and independent uh, startups for for spread uh, any any other kind of um, ecosystem so it's a big deal uh, you can find here in this fic that this uh, stay machine uh, paradigm in the ethereum virtual machine have different actions have different transitivity have different reflexivity and it's all about the the how this uh, circularity proof rule allows to conjecture any to be proven reachability claim as a circularity when transitivity allows to use the circularity axioms only after we have more progress on proving them so this uh, logic it's interesting way for understand the the state machine in this so all this uh, mat clean content for understand the semantics of the ethereum virtual machine it's the thing that the beacon state needs for make a resilient network So it's an interesting paper out there. So I think that we can see uh, only a little bit more about this beacon chain for the stay stay machine, and we can find here how to make this uh, function. 
that are still in developed area because this Ethereum uh, virtual machine needs to um great in soft fork uh, implementation so in this way this kind of abstract method are still in develop to figure out uh, what kind of data are 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 uh, getting for this kind of implementation um it's still in develop so was all for this video we have in another videos more things about this state machine replication so in the scope of this talk is that's was that's that's all